Welcome to the scurrychurchofchrist.org. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed uh, for lack of knowledge. Please don't let this happen to you. Feel free to contact us at scurrychurchofchrist.org uh, where you can visit us and any Bible question that you may have, we will do our best to answer. We are so glad you decided to visit us. In the nature of Christ, and when we say God, remember we're talking about his divine nature. Christ is God. He has a divine nature. Uh, the Father is God. He has a divine nature. The Holy Spirit is God. He has a divine nature. So there are three distinct personalities in the Godhead. So we talk about uh, monotheism, being monotheistic. Uh, we believe in one God, uh, but remember, what is that God? And when people normally think about God, they think about like a person. And, and we talk about the, uh, the Pentecostal and we're learning from uh, their thoughts uh, that they believe that they don't believe there are three distinct personalities. There's one personality, which is Jesus. And so remember, Jesus is the father in heaven. That's him. Uh, when uh, he came to the earth, he became the son, Jesus. When he left and came back, he became the Holy Spirit. And so they don't believe in three distinct personalities. They believe there is one. That is not the God of the Bible. And we don't believe in three gods. We're not saying that. There is only one God. But there are three distinct personalities in the Godhead, that divine uh, nature. And we also went to uh, the book of Genesis when the Bible says, let us make man in our own image. We discussed that in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. And what they say, they would say, uh, those who are listening now, if you go to uh, next week's lesson, we discussed that thoroughly. Uh, Genesis 126. So I would advise you to go back to that lesson that we did last week. But what they say that, remember, they're saying that when he said, let us make man, and that, of course, they believe that it's Jesus talking. There's one personality, the same person on the God, in the Godhead, and that image is the angelic uh, image. And so we looked at the book of Job, and we saw that the angels were there. I believe it's Job 38. The angels were there at the foundation. They were praising and singing at the foundation. Uh, but the angels are not divine. So you remember, they don't have a divine nature. There is there's a divine nature. There's a human nature. There's the angelic nature, like animals have their own nature. There's only one divine nature. And so we talked about that when he said, let us make man our own image, image. he was giving man uh, that rule, that authority. He gave man that authority. Remember, the angels were there, but he gave it to man. And we proved uh, last week that uh, let us make man our own image is not the angelic image. We saw that last week. We looked at that thoroughly. I don't want to stay too long on that tonight. Again, I, I would advise you to go back to last week's lessons. We talked about that. I think we discussed that. I think we did well at that. We looked at Hebrews chapter, the book of Hebrews, uh, the book of Philippians, and we saw that there's a difference between the uh, the angelic nature and the human nature. Man was made a little lower than the angels, so there's a there's a distinction there. It's not the same. So therefore, if we look at that, if we do away with that. Uh, conclusion that that's not the image of humans that's not the image of an angelic image so that let us make man our own image goes back to the deity we looked at that us is plural let us make man our own image so somebody's talking to someone else somebody's talking to someone else you see let us so somebody's talking to someone else and you know it, it's remember what i said that as we get to the to the old, to the new covenant, we know that there are three distinct personalities. As we see, let us, let us, we, we know there's more than one, but how many? Genesis kind of helps us understand, Genesis 11 helps us understand how many, but remember, that's plural. So let us make man in our own, in our own image is the image of God. Doesn't, doesn't mean he's given us a divine spirit. He's given us, he had, we proved that last week.
God gave man that authority to rule the earth. And remember, you look at the Genesis, who's ruling, who's in charge, who's the creator, God. So he gave, let us make man an own image. God has all authority. He gave man authority. He has a right to give man authority. Now, don't forget that authority lies within his law. Man has authority, but man has to, that authority lies within the law of God. You, you can't just go away from the law of God. And then you see that introduction in the book of Genesis. He gave Adam authority. But when Adam uh, broke the law, see, he was punished. So remember that authority still has to consist of being obedient to the law of God. So with that, let's go to Genesis chapter 11. We've drawn a conclusion that this image, let us make man our own image, let us, is uh, a plurality in this divine spirit. Okay? So I like Genesis chapter 11. I believe it's verse 7. Notice what he says here. Watch this. Genesis chapter 11, verse 7. Watch. Come, let us. See, come, here we go again. Come, let us. So there's one person uh, begging for others to come. Come, let us go down. Uh, there, let us go, let us go down. See, they're in the heavenly realm. That's the divine nature. Let us make man our own image. Uh, let us do this, let us do that. Okay. So now you see that uh, divine nature, he's saying, come, he's beckoning those, let us go down, see that's plural, and there, let us go down where? Let us go to the earth and confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. Look at verse six, and the Lord said, behold, they are one people and they all have the same language. And this is what they be, this is what they began to do. And now nothing which they purpose to do will be impossible for them. <clears throat> come, see, there's a conversation in the heavenly realm, in the heavenly realm, come, let us. So he's, he's beckoning, we know that's let us is more than one. So we, we, we have to say that we can say there's two, at least two, because there's more than one. So there's one talking, he's beckoning the others to come, and he's saying, let us, that the us is plural, so that means there's more than one, so it has to be two. And where we going, let's go down, implies they're in the heavenly realm, which is their divine nature. And we saw the order, uh, as we looked at Christ in the creation, remember, we look, we're not going back to that. Genesis chapter one, we saw it in the verse one, that's the father. Uh, Genesis, uh, I think it's verse two, the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the earth, that's the Holy Spirit. Uh, according to John 1, 1, uh, John 1, 14, uh, God came in the flesh. The word was God and the word was with God. And, and so you see, uh, and God said, that's Christ. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 6, we see in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 10, uh, in the book of Colossians chapter 2, we see Christ uh, created all things. And it talks about the Father created all things through the Son. And the Holy Spirit was that source of power that made it happen. That was the order that they were in. God designed it that way. So remember that I want you to, I'm, I'm going to emphasize this again. And I want to say this. Uh, that Christ never gave up his divine nature. That's important as we get to, if we, whenever we get to that, that some people, like I think Jehovah Witness, think he was a created being, an angelic being. Uh, and then the Islam think he was just another prophet. So we have to understand that, no, that's not true. He uh, is eternal, has always been eternal. He was not created. So we see that that's in plan. I want you to say that I want you to get this again. Let us go down. That's one person beckoning uh, to at least two people to come. Remember, us is plural. 
So he's beckoning for not one. So that's one, two, three. So that's already before we get to new covenant, we see there has to be more than one, which is implying two. In uh, Genesis three twenty two, Genesis three twenty two, um, then the Lord said, "Behold, the man has become like one of us." Okay, that's plural again, one of us. Okay, knowing good and evil, now lest he stretch out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Then the Lord God sent him out from the garden of Eden to cultivate the ground which he was taken. So you see that then the Lord God said, behold, a man has become like one of us, what, knowing good and evil. Of course, God knowing good and evil, that's, he knows all things, omniscient. And at that time, Adam and Eve only knew about good. See, they, they never experienced evil or sin until they ate from the tree that they were told not to eat from. And so God removes them from the tree of life that as long as they could eat from that tree, as long as they were able to eat from that tree, they could live forever. So if you notice, we're not going to get into that. When he, when he purged them out of God and he separated from the tree, eventually they died. Very interesting. So that's us is plural. So remember that. Now I know, watch this. I want, turn to Deuteronomy 6.4. Deuteronomy 6 4. And then I want to look at read a few scriptures. Deuteronomy 6 4. And then we're going to go to Galatians 3 22. Now watch this. Deuteronomy 6 4. Deuteronomy 6 4. Hear, O Lord, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, right? That's true. So the Bible says, Hear. O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. See? Now look at Galatians uh, 6 2. I'm sorry, Galatians chapter 3, verse 20. Galatians 3, verse 20, I believe it is. Galatians 3, verse 20. I'm going to give you time to get there. Galatians 3, verse 20. Now, a mediator is not for one uh, party only, whereas God is is only one there are passages that say that so you see the old covenant and the new covenant say he is one that's true that's true but we have to get into what does that one mean so you just don't look at that and say well there's only one okay what does that mean remember you know god is one that divine yeah, he is that's god is god is that divine god is divine he's deity that's god but there are three three distinct personality which make up the one personalities that make up the one. And it's very interesting. Like I said, when you get in, I said this before at one time, when you get into these, uh, the Zeus and the Hercules, you know, these uh, false gods that are portrayed in movies, etc., in books. And it's very interesting that you, you, you see these are false gods and you see how they, they go against one another. There's some problems, there's issues. There's, there's a little separation. They, they are kind of fight one another, they have disagreements. That's fiction, see, because we know that those are false gods because the God of heaven, they're, they're so unified. There's no, there's no problems, there's no issue, there's no separation, that it's just an impeccable unity. They don't fuss, they don't fight. It's just, a, it's a godly part of his, his deity, the attributes of his deity, he's holy, and that, that unity is just uh, perfection. That's who he is. There's no separation in the Godhead. Now why? So let's continue to deal with this. So remember when I said the, there are other passages when, so when you see where it says God is one, remember, uh, what does that mean? What does that mean? That's what you have to be able to deal with. What does that mean? That means that yeah, the nature of God, that God is divine. Remember, we looked at the Godhead in Romans chapter, I think it's Romans chapter 1 and verse 20, uh, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9, and I believe it's Acts chapter 17 and verse 26. So if I'm wrong, someone correct me later. But those say the, you know, in the King James, it says the Godhead. In the New American Standard Version, it says divine nature. That's what it is. So that's what God, Christ never gave up his divine nature. Christ 
was God. He still is God. He gave up some things because remember in John 17, as we discussed, he's asking God to give him back what he had from the beginning. And God did give him those things back, but he never gave up his divine nature, gave up his role. He became man. So he is. So remember, he is God. Holy Spirit is God. Um, and the Father is God. And I mentioned monotheistic. That's when people say there's one, we say there's one God versus, I think it's called polytheism or being polytheistic, that's more than one God. So we're still saying one God. It's just that there are three distinct personalities in this godly nature that makes them divine. Now, let, let's, let's dig further into this. Go to Psalms chapter two. We're going to deal with this tonight. Psalms chapter two. Psalms chapter two. Psalms chapter two is messianic. When I say messianic, um, it's prophetic of Christ the Messiah. It's pro you know, this prophecy, pro the prophecy about Christ is prophetic. How about it's about Christ of Christ the Messiah? So that makes it prophetic. It's, it's of Christ the Messiah. And you see that, in, in, like I said, Isaiah fifty-three, same thing. So this is all about Christ. Now stay with me. Watch this. Watch this. So remember, this is messianic. It's about Christ. Now watch as we go over this. I want you to see these distinct personalities in the Godhead. Don't take the Holy Spirit out of it because the reason why we have uh, these books is because of the Holy Spirit. He knows what's in the mind of the Father. So as you read Psalms, it's all inspirations given by him. All the scriptures are given by inspiration of God. Here we go. So in this, the Holy Spirit is giving us information about Christ, the Father. Watch. Verse 1. Why are the nations in an uproar and the people devising a vain thing? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord. From Isaiah 53. And against his anointed. See? How many is that? So that's that's Jehovah against the Lord. That's one. And against his anointed. That's two. It's very interesting how we get into Genesis. And you see, let us make man in our own image. Let us go down. Man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And as we get into the Bible, we see things like... And, and see that now we begin... You see... One and two. Again, verse two, the bottom. Against the Lord, that's one, the Father. And against his anointed, that's two. Isaiah 53 talked about how they were going to go against Christ, the Messiah. In other words, when they go against Christ, they're going against the Father. So you see all these are coral that they tie in together. So I want you to see that. There it is. That's one and that's two, verse two. Watch. Let us let let us tear their letters apart and cast away their cords from us. See, so now this is the rebellion. This is rebellion. They did not want to accept this Messiah. They did not want to accept the anointed. Remember, Christ went to the Jews first. That was the plan of the Father, and they rejected him. Isaiah chapter fifty three. And and, and so I, I like that when you look at the, let us tear their letters apart. Let, you know. Whatever, let us get rid of that and cast away there. See, that's who we, we're discussing who there, who, who's there, the father and the son. See, the father and anointed. That's two. Look at verse four. He who sits in heaven laughs. Here we go. It, it's, it's, this verse is interesting. People are, like, they're rejecting the plan of God. They reject their, their, Rejecting the anointed. I'm going to say it again. Isaiah 53. Remember? And that, that's all messianic. I, I believe it's 12 verses. They're all messianic. They're rejecting the anointed. And God, it, it's like it's like he's laughing. It's being it's sarcasm. He's laughing at them. Like, you got to be kidding me. You know, you hear people. You see people today. They're rejecting God. And, you, you, you know, you see things in this nation that's going on. And you're. 
you know, all the sin that's gone all over the place and, and all over the world. And it's, it's people just not acknowledging the word of God and they're rejecting. And even when his people proclaim his kingdom and, and mention there is one kingdom of salvation, that kingdom, people reject that. It's, it's like, what are you doing? Well, it, it's a joke. What are you doing? And it's very interesting. You see here that God is doing this for mankind, and there he, you know, Christ goes. His plan was to go to the Israelites first, not because they were in the expression, because of Abraham. They came from the seed of Abraham, and so there, it's let us tear their letters apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. See, it's like, are you kidding me? He's doing this for them. Like he's doing things for us and we reject him. He's doing things for us and we reject him. Do we realize everything, what he does, he's doing for us. He sent his son for mankind to save the world. He established a kingdom. He, he, this is his kingdom, the world. He establishes a spiritual kingdom where salvation is so mankind can be saved. And those faithful in that kingdom will be delivered up to the Father for, for you know, eternity. And we, it's like everything is for us. And we reject it. People are like, I've, I've heard people say sometimes, well, they don't understand how detrimental it is not to be saved. They think, well, I'll do it when I get ready. They don't want to. Let's move on. Verse five. Then he will speak to them in anger and terrible terrify them on his fury in his fury but as for me i have installed my king see that as for me that's two for me as for me i have installed my king upon zion my holy mountain in other words whatever you're going to do whatever they're doing their rejection uh, trying to interfere with the plans from god he's saying but i but as for me i have installed my king what king see the father I have installed my king. That's the son. He's king of kings. No one can stop the plan of God. Satan tried in Revelation chapter 12. You see the story there? He utilized men to try to stop the plan of God. We study that. No no one can stop God's plan. I tell people you might as well serve God anyway. You might as well because God is going to win. He, he will always win. So you see two right there, but as for me, I have installed my king. All right? Verse 7. I surely, I will surely tell of the this decree of the Lord. He's, watch this. Watch this. Look at this verse. He said to me, thou art my son. Today I have begotten thee. He, the father, that's one, said to me, that's Christ. See the see see you see Christ there. See, he said to me. Conversation. It's almost like the Holy Spirit is telling the story. He said to me, Thou art my son. So I want you to picture this. You're having a conversation. The father says to the son, Thou art my son. Today I have begotten thee. This is, of course. It's just a prophecy and it's fulfilled in a new covenant. See that? Ask of me and I will surely give the nations as thine inheritance. Ask of me. See the conversation? The father, that's the father. Ask of me, that's the father. And I will surely give uh, nations as thine. That's the son. There we go again. I love it. Watch this, though. Let's go a little further. Let's go back in verse 7. Let's go back to verse 7. I will surely tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, Thou art my son. Today I have begotten thee. Now let's go to, hold your spot there. We're going back to, uh, we're coming back here, but go to Luke chapter 1, verse 30. Luke chapter 1 and verse 30. Watch this. I mentioned this before, but I want I want us to really grasp this. Luke chapter one and verse thirty. So, 
I'm going to read that again in, in Psalms. Verse 7, I, I will surely tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. Okay, he said, that's the father, today I have begotten thee, that's Christ. And notice verse 30 of Luke chapter 1. And the angel said to her, now watch, and the angel said to her, that's, <clears throat> notice that that's an, that's an angelic nature, difference. Do not be afraid. Mary, see, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. See? That's a divine nature. That's a divine nature. You have the angelic nature. But he's, there's a distinction there. It's not the same. The angel said, that's an angelic nature. You have found, Mary, that's a human nature. You have found favor with God. That's divine nature. There's, there's a difference. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. And you shall, you shall call him Jesus, that's the Savior. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. When, when he is born, when you have him, he will be called the Son of the Most High. There, that's one. The Son, the Most High is two. That's the Father. See that? See? Three distinct personalities in God. And so when you see one God, remember, what does that mean? Just don't say, yeah, there's one God. Boom. No, what does that mean? It's like when you study baptism. He says, you know, he that believes in the baptized shall be saved. If that was the only scripture, we wouldn't know how that we, we wouldn't know what that means. You know, to be baptized is to be immersed. You know, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's immersed. And, so, and we have to dig other scriptures that relate to that to find out what does that baptism mean? He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be condemned. And so we go to Acts chapter 8, we go to uh, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, we go to several passages, Acts chapter 22 and verse 16, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 27, we realize that's how we uh, put on Christ, we're baptized, that's how our, God forgives us for our sins, when we're baptized according to his will, and we learn from Acts chapter 8, and we learn from John the Baptist, remember he was sent to baptize, and he was doing it in water. Remember, he went to a place because there was much water there. And we Acts chapter 8, uh, Philip baptized a eunuch. And he was he went way under the water. And he came up out of the water. And, and that's the same. So that's how we look at the scriptures. When he said there's one God, okay, what is that? What scriptures tie into that? That's how we start the Bible. Now, so you see here that he becomes a son uh, when he's born, in verse 35, verse 35, and the angel answered and said to her, remember, look at verse 34. Verse, verse, verse 34, and Mary, Mary said to the angel, that's the angelic nature, how can this be since I am a virgin? Notice what he says, and the angel answered and said to her, the Holy, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the, see, and the power of the most holy the most high will overshadow you. And for uh, that reason, the holy offspring shall be called the son of God. See, <laughs> see that you have the father, the Holy Spirit. You see that in the creation. You see that in the creation. It, you know, it's just this is the father's plan. And the Holy Spirit is that source of power. Did they all have power? Yes, but there's, there was God had a plan. To, he, he developed a plan to save mankind. And that was the order. But notice to God, notice the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Offspring shall be called the Son of God. Why is he called the Son of God? Because he has divine nature. And I'm inclined to believe, remember I said that you see those in Psalms, you'll see he's called the Son, the Son. That's that's looking for that's looking towards the future, and the the new covenant fulfills what the old covenant said. But he became the son in the in the uh, new covenant when he lowered himself. See, he took on a different role. But he, if you catch this verse, watch it again, verse thirty-five. And the angel answered and said to her, "The Holy Spirit, see one, will come upon you. The power of the Most High to will overshadow you." And for that, for that reason, the holy offspring, 
3, that's Christ, shall be called the Son of God. In other words, he's going to have divine nature right from the beginning. So when we talked about that, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9, John chapter 1 and verse 14, I'm going to go there quickly that I'm going to get out. John 1 and verse 14, see, he has a divine nature right from the beginning. And it was done miraculously. She never uh, can, did what married people do. And here she has a child. It's Emmanuel, God with us. See, 114, remember that? John 114. Let me go there. Uh, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld the glory, glory of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth, begotten from the Father. See, the word became flesh. That's, and we see that Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9. Got to go there for me real quick. Colossians 2 and verse 9. In that flesh, for in him dwells the fullness of deity. See, in him, for in him all the fullness of deity, that's that he's divine, dwells in bodily form. So in his bodily form was a divine nature. Never lost it. So you see, there are three distinct personalities in here, in this divine nature. And you see right here from the beginning. And let's go back to Psalm chapter 2. Psalm chapter 2. So verse 7 again, I will surely tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, that's one, thou art my son, that's two. Today I have begotten thee, that's Christ again. Ask of me and I will surely give the nations as thine inheritance, that's Christ. And the very ends, and the very ends of the earth as thy possession. Of course, Christ received that. Thou shalt break them with an with a iron rod, with a, a iron rod, iron of rod. Thou shalt shatter them like earthenware. Now, therefore, O kings, uh, show a discernment. Take warning, O judges of the earth. Worship the Lord with reference, and rejoice with trembling. Watch this now. Look at verse 12. He's God. Do homage to the son, lest he become angry and you perish in his way. Do homage to him. Do homage to him. See? Do homage. In other words, worship him. Now watch this. Turn to Revelation 19 and verse 10. Hold your spot. We're going back. Revelation 19 and verse 10. Because I'm not finished. Watch, watch how we deal with this. Revelation 19 and verse 10. So, you see the conversation there. You see the two distinct personalities in the Godhead. In Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10, remember, uh, it says, the Bible says, worship, God said, worship the Son. You better worship Him because He will become angry. And so, Revelation uh, 19, go there, Revelation 19 and verse 10. Now, watch this. And I fell at his feet, that's John, John is talking, and worshiped him, he worshiped an angel. And he said, so the angel said, see, the, and he said to me, that's the angel talking to John, do not do that. In other words, do not, the angel said, see, there's an angelic nature and there's a divine nature. We don't worship the divine nature. I mean, the angelic nature, we worship the divine nature. And he said to me, do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours as you, brethren, as your brethren who hold the testimony of Jesus, worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. Worship God. So the angel says, do not worship me, John. John was excited about the mess and he falls down. He worships his angelic being. He says, don't do that. You know, angels are ministering spirits. They're ministers like we, we serve one another. So they serve. He said, don't do that. In other words, he said, I'm not divine. Worship God. Worship this divine nature. Do not worship me. So worship God only, see? And in chapter, let's go back. So worship, the angel says, worship God only. And we see here in verse 12 of Psalms 2, do homage to the son. So worship the son, lest he become angry. So why is God saying worship the son? Because the son is God. He's saying, and, and the angel says, do not worship me, only worship God. And God's saying worship the son. Why? Because you only worship God. That means that Christ is God. He has a divine nature. 
And this is prophesying about his coming into existence. So you see right, right here, it was fulfilled in the new covenant. So when he, in other words, it's really saying when he comes in, he's coming in with divine nature because he's telling you worship the son. And, you know, and we are only supposed to worship God. Therefore, uh, I draw to the conclusion, of course, that Christ is God. He has a divine nature. Now watch this. Go back to verse 8. I'm going to read verse 7 and 8 of Psalms 2. Now I want you, I want you, what I want you to do as we discuss this, I want you to go to Daniel chapter 7 while I'm talking. Let me go there. I already have mine marked, so I'm going to give you time. Daniel chapter 7. We're going to look at uh, verse 9 through 14. I will run out of time. Daniel chapter 7. Now watch how this tie, watch this. Verse 8, verse 7 and 8 of Psalms 2, then we'll go to Daniel 7. I will surely tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, Thou art my son, today have begotten thee. Ask of me, and I will surely give uh, the nations as thine inheritance. Watch. So the Father saying, Ask of me. And I will give it to you. See, that's two. That's a conversation. Ask me, the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit, we un because of the Holy Spirit, we understand the conversation. It's almost like somebody telling the story. Somebody's right there, like if my son and I, Jeremiah, would have a conversation, and all of a sudden, uh, Jada tells what we were talking about because she's right there. But this, this is when you see this. This gives me goosebumps. Ask of me, and I will surely give the nations. As dying in heaven. So I ask me in John 17, I believe it's one through five, he asked the Father, Give me what I had from the beginning. And we know that God gave him what he had from the beginning after he finished uh, the task that he decided to take upon himself. And in Acts chapter one, he ascended to the Father. And now he's sitting on the right hand of God. He's reigning. We, we discussed that. He's not sitting there doing anything, he's working. So God did. Now watch this. Notice how. Daniel 7 ties into this. Daniel 7, I gave you time to turn there. Daniel 7, verse 9. This is, I believe this is going to be it after this because we're going to shut down. Um, Daniel 7. Okay. Watch this. Verse 9. I kept looking. Watch. I kept looking. This is Daniel. Daniel kept looking. Remember, Daniel's a prophet. I kept looking until thrones were set up and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His vesture, his coat, see that's coat, was like white snow. And his hair of his head like pure wool. This is the Father. We're not going to go here, but in Revelation, I believe it's chapter 1 or chapter 2. But he talks about his hair was like wool, etc. That's the Son. That's the Son. That's why we deal with these books. So you see it's describing the Father in Revelation. It mentions the, the, the like pure as wool. You see that in Revelation, that pertains to the Son. Just talking to the Father. They're the same. Three distinct personalities in the Godhead. But this right here is the Father. This is the Father. See, he said, verse 10, a river, a river was flowing and coming out from before him. That's the Father. Thousands upon, see, thousands upon thousands were attempting him. That's the father. I'm sorry, attending him. That's the father. And marriage upon marriage was standing before him. That's the father. The court sat and the books were open. He's about to cast judgment on the sins of Rome. That's the father. See, the books were open. Here comes the judgment. He's justified. Then Daniel saying, then in verse 11, I kept looking because of the sound of the boastful words, which the horn was speaking, and I kept looking until the beast was slain, that's Rome, and its body was destroyed and given to the burning fire. Remember, the books are open now, judgment is coming, Rome is condemned, Rome is destroyed. But the Father is doing it. The Father is doing it. Remember, we see that in Revelation, it was fulfilled. The Rome is going to, the church was established during the Roman Empire. In uh, Revelation chapter 12, 13, and following, you see that the Rome, Domitian was the king. They're going to try to destroy Satan. Revelation chapter 12 is going to use the thoughts of a king to uh, to destroy God's people who are in the church where salvation is this kingdom. So you see all this house connected here. 
Verse 12, as for the rest of the beasts, their dom dominion was taken away. God did that. But the extension of life was granted to them uh, for an uh, appointed uh, period of time. I kept looking in the night vision and behold, see, that's we, we just talked about the father. I kept looking in the night vision and behold, uh, with the clouds of heaven, one like the son of man was coming. That's two. Holy Spirit is telling the story. That's three. And he says, and he came up to the ancient of days. That's the fathers. You have the son, remember, in Acts chapter one, a Christ ascended to the father. Remember before that, after he left paradise, he was in paradise for three days. He told, when he when he resurrected, he, has, he, he told Mary, do not grab me. I have not yet gone to the father. He was in the Hadean realm. And then he, stay, he stayed 40 days with his disciple. And after that, actually the one he sends to the father, and then he sends the Holy Spirit. See the, see the working? There's three distinct personalities. So you see here, there, there, you see the connection. You see the father and one like the son of man was coming and he came up to the ancient of days. So it's the son going to the father and he presented. Now watch this. Remember, Christ is going to receive everything. Remember, he gave up things, you know, he, he became man and God's going to, you know, he established his kingdom and he's going to not only rule over the, he, he, you know, he's going to rule like he has always ruled. And plus he's the rule. He's going to be the king over this kingdom, his spiritual kingdom, what salvation is. Watch. Verse 14. And he, and, and to him was given, to him, to Christ was given dominion. Who gave it to him? The father. Glory and a kingdom that are. Now notice this before we shut down. I want you to grasp this. So after he, remember, he sends to the father, and we know that 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 implies you see that 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 all the work that he did, he he did it, he completed, and then he ascended, he finished. So he finished, and when he finished, what does God do? And to him, to Christ, was given dominion. Remember, he gave it up. Here he goes, glory and a kingdom. That's a spiritual kingdom. So he's reigning on this earth, but now he has a, you know, this earth belongs to him. But see, glory, here's a spiritual kingdom, glory and a kingdom that all the people's nations and and men of every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominium. He's going to forever rule, which shall not pass away. And his kingdom is one which shall not be destroyed. So you see, <laughs> he's ruling this entire world. But also notice that his spiritual kingdom is for all men. See that all the people and nations. I'm going to read that again. And this, watch this. Verse 14. And to him was given dominion. He has all authority. He has all authority. God gave it to him. Glory. God gave it to him. And a kingdom. See. That all the peoples, the entire world, and, the, and men of every tongue, doesn't matter what race might serve him in that kingdom. So you have the kingdom of the world, then you have the spiritual kingdom. And so this kingdom that God established is for the entire world. Every nation, every tongue, the entire world must be obedient to God. So salvation is in this kingdom. So when he says, see, when he said go out, and, and to every nation, baptize, see, go out into all nations, baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's the entire world. That's every race. See, um, so that's what we are. We are in this kingdom and we go out, we, we teach people where salvation is. Salvation is in this kingdom. In Revelation chapter 12, you see the same thing. That's what Satan is doing. Satan is trying to influence people to come out of the kingdom. Why? Because that's what salvation is. Christ is ruling this kingdom. But I want you to see that he's not only ruling this kingdom, not only he's not only ruling his spiritual kingdom, he rules the world. And so whatever he's doing providentially is to influence people to, to get into his kingdom, his spiritual kingdom where salvation is. That's for the entire world. So we look at this. Let's go back quickly. This is part of, you know, we're closing. As you look at this pandemic, it's, it's almost like I'm inclined to believe it's God 
influencing those to come out of sin and focus on his spiritual kingdom, which is in the word of God, where salvation is. And so he, even though people are being persecuted or suffering, he's still showing his love because he, he knows that salvation is in this kingdom that he established. If we can help you to, uh, tonight, if you need prayers, uh, whatever you need, uh, please make yourself known as we sing the song.